Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Life Scope. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Sorry I'm late. I'm just having some technical difficulties. Uh, my microphone and everything was kind of like acting crazy. So I... Uh, trying to kind of get everything going hey erica hey dolores hey nita how are you hey michelle hey 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 good morning good morning good morning hey life coach gordy fire good morning i see you on instagram and periscope good morning everybody good morning so i am not going to um yeah, I missed you too. I'm not going to um, kind of keep everybody waiting. I'm going to do my my shares so that we can get this party rolling and, um, and get started. We are talking about a new topic today, which is change this month. We're talking about change this month, which, you know, a lot of people don't like change. Hey, Love Life E. Hey, everybody. Good morning. And, um, hey, Andronette, how are you? Good morning, Doe7161. Good morning. Hey, Jill, good morning. Um, but yeah, so we um, <clears throat> tend to kind of stray away from, from this specific word, this specific topic. And uh, we're going to talk about it this month. We're going to talk about, hey, T. Thorpe for life. Good morning, everybody. I've got some newbies on the morning life scope on hey ebony on uh instagram which is super juicy i love newbies um so good morning everybody welcome to the morning life scope with true heart speaks i'm deidre true heart good morning everybody hey i'm missing some names here okay so hold on hold on roll on let's see who's here hey sharon hey nina um live from houston love it love it love it hey audrey hey michelle good morning um, and so we are live in full effect. So I am Deetra uh, Trueheart, your life purpose generator, purpose revoker, and I speak life mentor, um, speaker, teacher, coach, and author, helping you to get out of your own way and get to the business of living so that you can do life well. What does that look like? I help you to get unstuck and get started. Um, I think one of the hardest things for us to do is um, to get started. Hey, Johanna, good morning, lovey. And so, you know, my role is really to help you to get unstuck, get un get unstuck and get started. Um, I also help uh, busy women to slow down. I know what that's like to be a busy woman and to be involved in a lot of things. And so sometimes it's hard to slow down, hard to rest, hard to get quiet. And so that's one of my specialties as, as well. Good morning, Miss Keisha. How are you? So if you all are on Periscope, if you could swipe right on the iPhone and swipe up on the Android, I would absolutely love if you could share and invite followers. Hey, Lori, how are you? Um, if you're on Facebook and you're able to share, please do so as well. If not, that's okay, because um, I'm going to do my due diligence in sharing as well, and I'm going to do that now. And um, if you are new and you have um, have yet to get my free audio training, um, three ways to get out of your own way um, today, I want you to go to trueheartspeaks.com. That's trueheartspeaks.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, just type in your name and email, and it's uh, like a 15-minute audio, and I promise you it's juicy. Um, and it'll come right into your email and that's my free gift to you. Um, if you have yet to, uh, follow me on Facebook, um, uh, make sure you go to true hearts, uh, facebook.com forward slash true heart speaks. Make sure you like and follow so that you can get notifications on, um, when I go live, I go live every Monday through Thursday at 7.15 a.m., um, 7.15-ish sometimes, um, 7.15 to 7.45. We're on for about 30 minutes, and um, I just dropped a few juicy nuggets. And uh, good morning, Antoinette. How are you? Um, each month we do a topic, and so um, we are already in month five, and so this month's topic is changed, but we've done um, living leadership, we've done quiet time, we've done pride, we've done boundaries, and now we are doing um, change, and it's super juicy, um, the topics have been super good, and just in case you all didn't know, um, we actually now, specifically on my Facebook and my YouTube page, my Facebook page going all the way back to September, um, I have playlists now and so you can go back at the different topics and you can check them out and so um, let me just look at these really quickly before I jump into the teaching 
So even like on my video page right now, you can hear me going live. I'm excited to get this new topic uh, started. Me too. It's super juicy. So um, all, I have 11 playlists in my uh, True Heart Speaks page on Facebook. And so we've got crushing procrastination, emotional domination, activating your faith, pride, boundaries, quiet time. What else do we have? Living leadership, pursuing purpose, 30 days of thanks. Um... And I think that's it. Yes. So, and it looks like I might have um, a couple duplicates, but I'm not sure. But at any rate, you get a chance to check out all of those specific topics. And I think it's really good because some people had been... Um, you know, been saying, hey, I really wanted to check this out. Hey, Farrah, how are you, love? Good morning. Um, can you text me? Um, text me. I need to text you back afterwards. I need to ask you a question. But um, good morning, Kim. How are you? So if you all want to check out any of the previous topics, and I believe they go all the way back to September, you can check out those topics and you can, um, you know, it is what it is. So let me just go back in and go to the page. If I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the YouTube. Um, I'm also updating YouTube as well. I don't have all of the topics on YouTube, obviously, just because with me being on Facebook, they're accessible. Um, but I want to be able to allow people who are not on Facebook or who are not on Periscope to have access um, to the morning life scopes and the videos. And so I will be transfer um, transferring them um, to YouTube as well. So, um, so let's double tap. Let's get some hearts going. Um, we've been moving really, really, really fast. And so let's kind of get some hearts of worship going. I've been kind of laxed in, in, in those. I noticed I didn't do that yesterday. And you know, that's part of what we do. So let's double tap the screen. Good morning, Halise. How are you? I'm going to share while we're double tapping the screen and, um, and get this party started. Let me share in the group. Um, if you all could keep, and I'm um, not going to say the name, but um, one of my girlfriends, her mom is having surgery today. It's a 10-hour back surgery. And so if you could just keep her in prayer during her back surgery, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, just send some love up and just ask God to be with her during that surgery. Ask God to, good morning, Michonne. How are you? Um, ask God to cover her. Uh, you know, during that time period. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. Good morning. I'm just sharing. How are you, sis? I'm good. I'm super good. We are, um, my church, church leadership, we are doing, um, a live stream of a conference. Hey, AZ, um, through Andy Stanley in uh, North Point in um, in Atlanta called the Drive Conference. And yesterday was a general session and it was really good. Um, really, really, really good perspective on how we reach, um, be a church that reaches the unchurched, right? And so um, it was really juicy. Hey, Mary, good morning, love. How are you? Hey, Magic. Thank you for inviting followers, Jill. And anyone else who did, um, I, I, I couldn't see while I was typing. typing. So what I want to do is talk a little bit today about, um, about change. And good morning, boss lady. How are you, love? And um, really just the idea that today is a new, it's a new topic, a new conversation. It is a great morning. And, um, you know, it's interesting because <clears throat> when we talk about change, um, change can, can work for us or against us, right? And I think to some extent, um, it, for, for a lot of us, you know, and, and when I got this, I was kind of like, okay, Lord, like, what are we going to do with this? And you know, you all know, like when I get topics, like we always do some type of spin on them. Um, and it's really not me, it's him. And so, um, with that being said, um, just a quick intro, intro today is really what we're going to talk about. Um, and, um, we're also going to be reading from this book, who moved my cheese. We won't be reading from it today. I'm good. I did enjoy my time off. And so we'll be reading from who moved my cheese. Um, we won't be reading it from today or maybe tomorrow, but probably we'll start on Thursday. And, um, and we'll really be talking. I love, don't you love it? It's so good. Um, really just the importance of change. Um, and then we will be obviously adding um, some biblical pieces into that as well. But um, we really want to just talk about today specifically, you know, like what is change? You know what I mean? And really kind of just the definition so that we can really be clear 
on what it is. And so like um, the, de the definition in the dictionary says um, to make or become different or to you to take or use another instead. Right. And so um, and then there, it's a you, change can either be um, a change or to change. Right. There can be a change happening. Right. A noun or there can be to change. And so the idea. Hey, Nakia, good morning. Higher Ed Diva. The idea behind change, um, when we say to make or become different or something made different, kind of like an alteration. Hey, Red Sangria, it's funny, you all popped up at the same time, both Nakia's, Nakia with an A and Nakia with an I. Um, and so when we talk about change, um, the act or instance of making or becoming different, there is a, uh, a difference between um, a change happening in you um, and a change happening to you. Right. Um, and then also the idea behind you actually taking the initiative to make change as opposed to um, something being made different. And we're going to dive into that because I believe as believers that we are always changing, that we are always evolving. We are always becoming who God is creating us to be. Right. You are becoming who you've always been, but it is a process. And so when we talk about change, um, the idea behind change, the idea behind understanding that you have to make a change when a change occurs, um, but you also have to make, um, you have to become, you have to become different um, when something is made different or it's author, altered or changed. So I'll say that again. Good morning, Marilyn. I don't know if I said good morning to you. Thank you for everybody who shared the video. Um it says, um, you have become different when something is made different or altered, when something is changed. And I'm taking that from the definition. When we think about change and we think about how our lives have changed, when we think about how our circles have changed, when we think about the people in our lives that have changed, when we think about just over the years, our mindsets, our language, different things in our lives have changed. Um, change is somewhat inevitable. There's um, a saying that says the only thing that is constant in life is change. And I would say besides change is God. God is a constant. God is um, is all-knowing, ever-flowing, always there. Um, and so besides God, the only constant thing is change. And so during this month, we're going to have conversation about, you know, why we reject change, why we don't like change. Um, you know, I saw a post that you wrote. I don't know if you wrote it or you shared it, AZ, where it talked about from a standpoint as a believer, hey, sis, how are you? Um, as, as a believer, that there are some things about us that should not change. And I love that perspective as well. Um, and we're going to talk about that. Um, but, but, but the idea behind change is, is that nothing changes if nothing changes. And it's really, it's a really simple saying, but nothing changes if nothing changes. And so we, hey sis, how are you? Um, right, Jill? Hey, Chantel. And so if we, you know, it's kind of like we want things to change, but we don't want to change. We want things to change, but we don't want to change. Or, you know, we want, you know, we, we want, we don't want things to change. Um, but we recognize that we have to change in order for things to change. Hey, Pastor Jeanette, how are you? It's been a while. We got to catch up. Um, with work and everything, I need to know how like work is going and the students and all that juiciness. Um, but, you know, when we talk about like change, you know, we have to understand that change is a noun, right? P a person, place, or a thing, kind of like, so change is a thing, right? But then a change is also a verb, meaning it's thing to do, right? There's something that you have to do. So recognize this month that we're going to be having conversation. And I want you to think about this. Like, I'm not diving deep into it today, um, but I want you to, to, to really recognize that there is a process of change that is happening and that has to happen in order for you to evolve and transition into this new next level that you're going into. Remember, um, we are always transitioning into a new season, a new level. 
And so there are certain things this year and, and the words that God has given me, I believe these are words um, and topics that we are going to need in order to transition into this and prepare for this next new season. And remember, even as we started last year, the conversation is always about slow and steady. We're not trying to get there fast. We're not trying to get there before our time. We're not trying to get there. And we're not like we talked about yesterday, the idea of, um, releasing, releasing, comparing and releasing, competing. And hopefully you all made your release list. If you didn't, if you missed yesterday, we talked about, um, yesterday's <clears throat> Monday motivation was about releasing to unleash. And so, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to want to change into something that we're not meant to change into. And similar to, I always go back to the caterpillar and the butterfly, that there is timing in change. And so you cannot rush change in your life. You cannot rush the transition of change. You cannot rush um, God's timing of change in your life. Um, when we look at the process of the butterfly, when you look at the process of the caterpillar, good morning, Shamani, when you look at the process of that thing, you you have to understand that there is timing to that thing. And sometimes you just like the story of the man who was trying to help the butterfly out. Sometimes we cut ourselves out of the cocoon too fast and, and, and the change that is needed. And sometimes for us, it is an internal change, right? That internal change, not the physical change, but the internal change, the supernatural change, the mental change, the emotional change, the psychological change that needs to happen. It happen, It doesn't happen because we have prematurely. Good morning, Kim Shay. Are you all with me? And so we got to understand, and I'm learning this myself, not to rush the timing of God. Hey, Tammy, good morning. Not to rush the timing of God. Not as, as God is changing you and as God is um, rearranging and transforming you. Um, transform is another word for change. As he is transforming you, right? Um, as he is, um, you know, rearranging some things. You cannot rush. Hey, Jamila, how are you? You cannot rush the timing of God in your life. You cannot. And here's the other part. You cannot even rush the timing um, of process, right? We try, like some people say, you know, um, go slow. Uh, if you want to go slow, go alone. And if you want to go fast, go with others. But here's the thing that, that, that we have to recognize is you got to be careful about who you're going with. You got to be careful about who you're connecting with because the wrong person will take you too fast and they will take you wrong. Y'all are not with me. When we talk about change and we talk about transition and we talk about this idea of to change and a change, that there is a process that you have to go through. And some of us, it's not even that we're we're um, going too fast. Some of us don't want to go at all. Some of us don't want to change. Some of us don't want to. And here's the thing. You, you, you cannot be who you were five years ago in order to be who God needs you to be today. Let me just tell you that. You cannot. There has to be a mindset change there has to be um a uh, um, not only a mindset change there has to be a message change like the way you speak if i looked at my videos from last year if i looked at my videos from two and three years ago if i looked at even my mindset and how i see things from two and three years ago there is a change there is a process of change there is a process of transformation and so you got to understand that when we talk about the timing of god right the timing of god is never late the timing of god is never late so when we look at change and we understand that it is to make or to become different nothing changes if nothing changes nothing changes if nothing changes let me tell you and so you want change but you don't want to change you want change but you don't want to be changed you want change but you don't want to do what it takes in order to change that can't happen it can't happen it cannot happen. Good morning, everybody who's joining the Morning Life Scope. Good morning, everybody who is sharing this. Um, it, I'm just telling you, and, and I keep telling. And, and the interesting thing, and I'm going to say this a couple, a couple of, um, a couple of times. But um, while I was preparing for this month, one of the things that um, I've noticed is our connection to every single topic that we've been talking about this month, right? So um, every month this year. So I'm going to read this and this is not going to be the first time that you're going to hear this because I believe that there is a connection to everything that God has given me this year. So it says, because you know, January was our living leadership, right? So, and, and I'll talk to you, you'll see the topics and then I'm going to bring them full circle. So it says, in order to live out leadership, so we know January was living leadership. In order to live out leadership, you need to master getting quiet. <laughs> 
Good morning, Dr. V. In order to master getting quiet, you need to identify, confront, and remove pride. That was our next topic. In order to identify, um, confront, and remove pride, you need to create boundaries. And in order to create and implement boundaries, there are some things that you need to change. How juicy is that, right? I told y'all when I had my quiet time, like I was getting them digital downloads and they were just getting real juicy. And so everything that we have been talking about since the very beginning is connected. You cannot live out leadership if you don't know how to get quiet. You cannot um, get quiet and you cannot get to it. If you don't learn how to get quiet, then you won't be able to identify those areas of pride in your life and you won't be able to deal with those areas of pride in your life. And the only way that you're able to deal with the areas of pride in your life is that you now got to create boundaries and you got to get to a space where you start cutting some things off and you got to start identifying and calling some things out. And here's the thing, as we start to create and implement boundaries you can't do that unless you change and what does that mean it just simply means that you've got to make some changes in what you're doing in order to be able to live a life that you want to live and so in order to when we talked about boundaries last month like you can't move to the next level if you're still doing what you're doing now you if you're continuing to say yes to everybody and everything you can't focus on the things that God is calling you to if you if you know what your assignment is and we talked about your race and your pace yesterday thanks to Nakia it says can you post that on Facebook I would love to share that absolutely but here's the thing <clears throat> it says getting quiet will cause you to reflect and see the truth absolutely Dr. Um, Dr. J you know I'm back to that Dr. J Pastor J but it absolutely getting quiet literally you know is the foundation of what I teach you all um, but 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 today you know when we just talk about what changes and we talk about, you know, change in you and change around you, all of that juiciness, right? It's all connected. And so you you can you cannot get to a space where if you're trying to be, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I I use I always use money, for example. And so if the goal is to save five thousand dollars this year, um, you've got to change the way you're dealing with money right now. You gotta create some boundaries around your money. Right. And you can't be prideful around the fact that you admit that you're a spender and you don't know how to save. And in order to really admit that, you got to get quiet and you got to allow those digital downloads to happen so that in the end, you are living out a life of leadership. What does that mean? That means that everybody that you are around, that you are, that you exemplify, right? And not being perfect. Don't, don't mis misjudge what I'm saying. Not that you're perfect, but we are all models for our tribe. Remember, you've got a group of people who are assigned to you. Those of you who've never heard me say that, I've been saying this for over a year, longer than that. You have a group of people who are assigned to you, who are assigned to your call, your ministry, your business, your life, your experiences, your flaws, all that kind of stuff. That's what living leadership is all about. It is all about living a life of leadership, leading um, individually, leading collectively, leading in your family, leading in your business, leading in your ministry, leading on your job. But you can't do that effectively if you don't know how to get quiet. You allow God to make those, depo those deposits. Um, you know, and so when we transition and go all the way and we circumvent back to this month of change, when we talk about what exactly is change, it literally really just is all about transformation. It's all about becoming different. And my challenge to you is to be open because some of you, God is trying to move some things around in your life. God is trying to transition some things. God, you want to up level in your life. You want to up level in your business. You want to up level in your ministry, but you want to keep doing the same things. We know we that we call that insanity. You cannot continue to keep doing the same things over and over and over again and expecting different results it is literally just not it's not it's 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 just not so i gotta i literally my minute is gone i thought i had a minute we're gonna pray but today is just the introduction y'all just the introduction we're going to pick up with this conversation tomorrow. Um, if you have yet to get this book, we will be reading from um, Who Moved My Cheese. This is a quick book. I'm literally, I started reading the book yesterday and I'm literally almost done with it. I'll be done with it probably today. And we're going to talk about the conversation of change in this book. And I believe that you'll be able to see yourself in this book as well. But but the bottom line is this, is that um, you can't want things to be different, but you're, but you're not. Um, yeah, today is the first day. <laughs> just the introduction we literally we've got three more weeks to go three weeks two two three weeks and a couple days to go and so juicy right and so let's you know when we talk about it change being to make or become different 
um, to take or use another instead, um, to, or in, in a noun sense, um, to act the act or instance of making or becoming different, right? Um, who moved my cheese? I'm sorry, I pulled it away too quickly. Who moved my cheese? So those of you, you might already have this in your library. If not, it is a definitely a quick read. This is something that you, if you can see all the little thingies in it, it is something that you you can read over and over and over and over and over again and get new revelation um, from it. So um, so let's pray. I'm going to let you all go. I got to get my little baby up for school um, and um, I'm going to work out today. And I know Brittany is getting ready to just wreck shop on my whole body, y'all. She just, huh, I hate working out. Can I just tell y'all sidebar? I hate working out. I hate it. I so hate it. But I love, speaking of books, when will yours be mailed out? It's actually... Final proof. Somebody's reading my final proof, and if the final, if there's no editing in the final proof, it'll probably be mailed out within the next week or so. Um, and just so you all know, um, love that book, Him and Hall. Yes, um, I'm totally just, I'm, I've become at, at, at peace with not rushing this process of this book. Um, there is a, there's so many lessons that I've learned. Um, in this process of this book and editing and reading and making sure. Um, you know, not, it's like we have the, we get so excited about something and, uh, yes, child Janice, she just, whew, we get so excited about stuff. Yes, you can still order the book. If you all are interested in ordering my book, you can go to trueherspeaks.com forward slash 30 days of thanks. Um, but one of the things that I've learned is not to rush the timing of God, not to rush timing at all. Um, but also not to make assumptions. And there's so many assumptions that I made, um, with this book that I will, I will share when it's done. Um, because there's so much that I've learned um, that I will not make the same mistakes again. Um, and, and they're mistakes that I will make sure that I share with you all. Um, first things first is make sure you, um, you know, you make time for editing. Um, and you have somebody who can edit your book um, and that you understand the process of not just writing the book, but creating and publishing and editing the book. It is a totally different machine. Writing the book is one thing, um, but editing it, um, creating it, making sure that it looks and feels good um, are all things for me. Like, I don't do anything with my name on it that's bootleg. And so for some of you who are wondering what has taken so long, that is what has taken so long. Because when you get this book, I want you to be able to feel the love, feel the effort, feel what I have put into it. Not just the words, but when you get it, you're like, ooh, okay, this is it. Um, so at any rate, yes, yeah, so you can go to trueheartspeaks.com forward slash 30 days of thanks. If you go to my website, right on the banner, you should see the pre-order. Um, and so you are still able to pre-order. And, and as of right now, I think there are about 125 books that I have to mail, um, once when I finally order my pre-orders and mail them out. And so if you want to be in the number of that 125 books, thank you, Jesus, that I have to mail out, um, I will be honored to send you a book, sign it, um, and send you a special gift, um, that goes with that as well. So at any rate, let's pray. Um, but this is, you know, let's, you know, I want you all to um, just be encouraged that as God is making changes in your life, we're going to talk about this conversation this month because um, to some extent, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You can't, you can't run from it. You can't, um, can't hide from it. Um, and to some extent, if you do, you stunt your growth, you stall your growth, you stagnate your growth. And so if you're wondering to some extent why you aren't as far as you want to be, it could be because you have rejected change. You have rejected the changes that God is trying to do in your life and he's trying to implement. And, you know, to some extent, you're not interested, right? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this space. We thank you, oh God, for just an opportunity, oh God, just to come before you this day on this morning life scope where we have started our new conversation and our new topic of change. Lord, I am eager but a little nervous um, because as I teach I learn and um, as I grow um, I am changed and challenged it says I gave God the white flag surrender <laughs> I know that's right and so um, got my green tea yesterday yay and so Lord we just thank you for this time and this space of everybody who's joining live and on the replay and so I just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds everybody including me um, to the changes um, that you are getting ready the transformation that you are getting ready um, and have already really um, begun to launch inside of us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this month, this new month, this new topic. We thank you for the lives that are getting ready to be changed, the messages that are you getting ready to share with us, oh God. 
We thank you, oh God, for um, just whatever is getting ready that is is in the process of being birthed, right? The preparation that is that we are going through in order to kind of get into this next new season. There are always going to be new seasons, but this next new season that we are coming into, God, we just thank you for the changes that are going to need it to be made. We thank you, oh God, for the change in us. We thank you, oh God, for the change around us. We thank you, oh God. Um, just for the manifestation that's getting ready to happen as a result of what we are getting ready to learn from this process and this teaching and this message of change. And so, Lord, I just ask and pray a special prayer for um, my sister's mother, my not sister, but my friend. Um, I'm not going to put it out there because I don't know if she wants people to know. But um, those of you who know prayer and you pray and you can get a mean one through um, a friend of ours who is part of the I Speak Life tribe. Her mom is having surgery today, a 10-hour back surgery. And so if you could keep her in prayer, Father, I'm just asking that you would be with her during those 10 hours and even after during the physical therapy and everything, Father, that you would have your way. You know all things, God. And so I'm asking that you would be... Um, that you would be a healer, that you, oh God, would be a comforter, oh God, that you would be a pain reliever, oh God, that you would be um, a mind regulator, oh God, that you, oh God, would be a peace sustainer, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just ask that you would be with her while she's in surgery and the family, oh God, as they await, oh God, her during this 10-hour surgery, Lord. And Father, I ask that you would do whatever you need to do in her back um, and that you would allow what needs to happen to happen lord we trust your will your way um and so father we just speak healing we speak restoration god um and we speak comfort in jesus name we pray amen so you all have an awesome day thank you for the heart love thank you god for joining me on instagram periscope and facebook everybody and um, we will definitely continue this conversation your shirt will be coming i think this week michelle um, I kind of shipped them out in, 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 in pieces, um, as the shirts came in. And so, um, but hopefully this has been a blessing to you. Hey, Tashiko. Hey, lovey. Um, it, you know, but again, change, um, we are, you know, we are in a season and a process of change as we can see, even just through the seasons. Now we are getting ready. We're transitioning in the middle of spring, but we're getting ready for summer. Right. And so, um, we want to be ready. We want to, we don't want to rush the process. We don't want to rush the timing of God. Um, we don't want to slow the timing of God down, right? But we also don't want to rush the timing of God. And so whatever God is doing in us in order for us to change, in order for us, it is happening, right? In order for us to be in a space where we can be created into the butterfly, um, you know, that God is calling us to be and creating us to be internally and maybe even externally, um, we need to be ready for it. And so, um, you all have an awesome day. Remember, um, I don't always say it every day, but remember to be salt and light. Um, you are the light that somebody needs to see in somebody's world of darkness. I needed to hear this. Thank you. You are so welcome. Hey, Janice, how are you, love? And um, it's going well. It's going well. How are you? It's been a minute. Um, and so you all, you know, be encouraged because, you know, I was encouraged. Let me, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to um, go. I was encouraged today with, um, on Sunday, um, and I'm always encouraged, but I was encouraged Sunday specifically. Um, we're learning about the five things that trust the process. Absolutely. It's um, the five things that God uses to grow our faith. And so um, for those of you who are in Buffalo, sidebar, um, I will be speaking at my church on Sunday for Mother's Day. And so I'll be actually talking about week three of this um, this series. But um, this week or week two, I don't know if it's week two or week three, but um, on this past Sunday, we talked about providential relationships and, um, and the one who's in control of the process. Absolutely. And so um, she said that um, my providential, the providential relationship that I have with you, she's actually, we go to church together, but she's one of my coaching clients. And she says the providential relationship that I have with you has revolutionized my life and can I tell y'all I just I just broke down um for one because and you all know I say this all the time I don't take what I do for granted um I, I never assume that what I'm sharing everybody gets um but I but I know that you know when God gives me something and when God connects me to people that it is divine right and so I am grateful um just for the opportunity to be able to share with you all and to make deposits in you. And I say all of that to say that never assume that what you do can does not make a difference in somebody else's life. That never assume and never take for granted or never just, um, I'm not even looking at you, Janice, because you just, <laughs> um, or you, Jill, but 
you know, never assume that what you do doesn't matter. A lot of times we get so caught up or we, the enemy has a way of speaking to us and making us think that what we do doesn't matter or lives are not being changed or that we're just kind of doing it for the sake of doing it. And at the end of the day, never assume and never take for granted that what you do, even in your darkest and lowest point, that it doesn't matter because somebody is watching you. Somebody is that's connected to you is paying attention. Um, and so it says, I might need to delay my flight on Sunday to be in church. <laughs> Stop it, Lori. Um, but at the end of the day, understand that you matter. Understand that you don't, you may not necessarily have a platform like this, but let me say when you show up to work as salt and light, when you show up, um, at, you know, in whatever capacity that you do, when you show up to the bank, when you show up to Target, when you show up to the mall, when you show up to that dinner dance, when you, when you show up, just show up, but best believe that those who are connected to you, best believe that your salt and your light, it means something. Best believe that somebody is being impacted by your light. They're being impacted by your salt, right? And salt that has no flavor or no savor means nothing. And so please don't believe and miss and misbelieve um, that God is not using you for a time as such as this. Best believe that 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 and and don't don't allow the enemy to make you believe that you have no impact. Even right where God has deposited you, you have impact. You have impact. Understand that no matter what it is, never yes, never assume that what you do doesn't matter. It matters, Jill. Those kids that you connect with, I guarantee you, some five or ten years after you have moved on, after you have transitioned, and after you are doing the thing that you know God has called you to do because you haven't been doing it just yet but we're not gonna get on to that but just recognize that the kids she said you're about to go in again i am about to go in again just recognize that every capacity every capacity i remember seeing kids who who i was a camp counselor over and who are now getting you know going to school and getting master's degrees and you know and to some extent some of them look older than i do but you ain't heard that from me because <laughs> you know i got that good stuff i'm just kidding but not really but let's just understand that it matters. Every seed that you sow, it matters. There is a connection to it. It's a connection to it. And so just like I said, be salt and light today. Um, Y'all laughing because you know I meant that, but I didn't, but I really did. Sorry, not sorry that you look older and I don't. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Jesus, don't get me for that. But, um, but it matters. It matters. And so when she said that to me, that our providential relationship, um, that her connection to me was a providential relationship that has revolutionized her life. I, when I tell y'all I was done on Sunday, I was done. I was done. But I needed that because, you know, I question. I do question. When, even when I show up, I still question. You know what I'm saying? And so God has a way of just reassuring you um that what you do matters and so i want you to know that what you do matters and not only what you do but who you are and whose you are it matters and so never for one minute second guess that where you are even if it's not the ultimate place that you know you believe god has called you to believe that you matter believe that it matters and believe that somebody one person they're watching you they've been watching you they haven't even been saying anything but they're watching y'all know i teach that they're watching your go through because how you go through and how, and they're watching your go through is helping them go through it's not the success moments it's not the moments that it's the go through moments that people are watching it's the struggle moments. It's the I remember when moments like, wow, I just watched you go through that. I mean, you know, and you all know that that's kind of how my book came from. And so people wondered, like, how was I able to get through that whole season of situation with my dad? I was writing. I was continuing to pour out. I was obedient to what God was calling me to do, because if not, I was going to lose my mind, just to be honest. Somebody is watching. And so never you matter. I just I don't know why I had to say that, but you matter. I need you to know you matter. You matter to me, but more importantly, you matter to God. He has not forgotten about you. I don't know who I'm talking to. He has not forgotten about you. He has not pushed you off to the side. He has isolated you for a reason. He is He is changing and transforming. My God, just, just trust that God, you matter 
to him. Just trust that what you are going through is part of the process. Trust that everything that you are going through is not for naught, that God will use it to his glory. Trust, just trust. I'm already in my message for Sunday. Just trust trust that there is nothing that you have been through is that is lost to God trust me you matter and so when you show up for work today when you walk into Target today when you because you might not be off you know to the stay-at-home mom to the to the entrepreneur to the career mom to the career woman to the career dad whoever where wherever you are when you walk into that place you walk in with your held up your head held up high knowing that God has chosen you for such a time as this to be a light to somebody anybody somebody Yes, Pastor Jake, trust him and come into agreement with it. So I love y'all. I love you too, Stephanie. I love y'all. Know that I am, we are walking this thing together. Know that we are in this thing together and just listen, God is, listen, he is for you. Know that he is for, if nobody else is for you, God is for you. And it may not feel like it because sometimes God has a weird way of showing us that he is for us, but it is always working out for his good, not our good, right? Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but it is always. But that's okay if it's trying to if it's trying to freeze because I'm going to let y'all go. But I just want y'all to know that I love you. I want you to know that God loves you. And I want you to know, uh, I want you just to be encouraged because you matter. You matter. So I will see y'all tomorrow. We'll continue this conversation of change tomorrow, right? Um, thank you so much. Uh, she said, nah, huh? <laughs> We are absolutely more than conquerors, right? Confirmation. Hey, Felicia, I'm so glad. Yes, don't give up. Thank you, Tashiko, for that word. He is for you. <coughs> so I love y'all. I will see y'all tomorrow. And have an awesome Tuesday. Bye. You're welcome, love. <laughs>